Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's 1.30. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority uh, to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please uh, take the roll and read the Metro Cable Statement? Good afternoon. Director Steinberg? Frost? Gatewood? Gira? Gotcha. Gira? Hansen? Harris? How? Hume? Kennedy? Daryl Steinberg. Is now joining. Miller? Unknown participant is now exiting. Natoli? Here. Peters? Here. Sandhu. Here. Shanir. Here. Is now joining. Serna. Here. Suen. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Miller's here. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, given given uh, where we are today, I think it's useful for us to. Uh, to uh, uh, embrace our nationalism. And I'm gonna invite my six feet apart neighbor and colleague, uh, Director Serna, to uh, join in the pledge. And I invite everybody listening on the phone and wherever you are, uh, please fi find a flag or have one in your mind, or you can see it on TV here and join us in the pledge. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for the stands one nation, nation under God, 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 under Thank you, everyone. And if I could just remind folks uh, to mute your phones when uh, you're not speaking um, and turn your volumes down so we don't hear the uh, background um, interference noise uh, over here. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone's staying healthy. Um, this is a sign of the times, and it's a, a new but temporary normal. Uh, I, I know uh, some folks in the public may wonder why these board meetings and council meetings continue to occur. And I, I would say it's, it's rooted in the hopeful belief that we will get through this. And when we do, the issues that were top of mind, like transportation, traffic, air quality, uh, just a few weeks ago, will once again uh, be, be uh, in, in the forefront of our, of our conversations and, uh, and uh, mindset. Um, at this uh, time, I also want to say that um, as this meeting is being conducted, uh, we are in compliance with the directives of the state and the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. This meeting will be streamed live, is being streamed live, and will be closed to uh, public attendance. However, you can view the meeting, as uh, Madam Clerk stated, on Metro Cable 14 at metro14live.sackcounty.net, or alternatively, STA website, uh, www.sacta.org. Members of the public are encouraged to participate by submitting written comments electronically. Comments submitted in person will be delivered to the board members by staff. A lot of our board members already have a number of comments that have been submitted earlier today. Um, written comments regarding matters under the jurisdiction of the board of directors and not in the posted agenda will be acknowledged by myself, the chair, at the beginning of the meeting. Public comments will be accepted until the adjournment of the meeting and distributed to the board of directors and included in the record. Those will also be posted on the website, uh, at uh, STA website for, for your viewing. And uh, please let us know if you do not see uh, your comment in that, in that uh, uh, on the website. Um, you can also submit public comments via email at Board clerk at sackcounty.net. That's board clerk, B O A R D clerk at sackcounty.net. Or in person here at 700 8th Street in the Chambers, Sacramento, California, 95814. Okay, I think that's, um, and I mentioned earlier about folks keeping their mics on mute. 
uh, and volumes down, if you don't mind. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, look for uh, any open uh, or any comments from the public that are not uh, on the agenda matters. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any? We have not received any. Okay, we have not received any comments that, for items that are not on the agenda at this time. Um, Director Cerna, you had a question. Yeah, just another reminder, this is Director Cerna. Someone someone has not muted their phone. It's making it difficult for us to hear uh, here in the chambers. If you can please mute your phone, that would be greatly appreciated. Great, thank you, Director Cerna. I appreciate that. Uh, again, I'll just repeat uh, for folks who may not have heard, for opening or public comments not on the agenda, we don't have anyone submitting comments at this time. I don't see any uh, flag from the folks at the door, and so no one's in outside uh, physically dropping any comments off. Um, with that, um, I'd like to... Uh, um, Director Soon? Yes, Dir Director. Uh, uh, this, yeah. this is Sue Frost. Yeah. I just wanted to raise my hand. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> virtual hand, yes. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the public comment. Uh, my under I have not, my understanding is that the public comment just came in a short time ago. I know that we're, um, this is, these are unprecedented times, and I know how important it is for people to have their chance to have their voice. And I wonder if we're going to be listening to public comment in our meeting uh, prior to our vote, because um, I have not, I don't think anyone has had a chance to even review all the public comment uh, because we didn't, we have not, we hadn't received it in, in you know, yeah. it, it came just a few minutes ago and we're collecting it up, up to the end of the meeting. But if we're taking a vote, we need to hear the public comment, either have it read to us. It really should be read so that people know their voices were heard and that their comment was um, uh, registered with the entire board. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Director Frost. Uh, we, we've we received a number of public comments, and I want to thank you uh, for, for your email. Um, I think that that had a, a great effect in in, uh, in obtaining a lot of input from your constituents. But I, I, I and we'll get into that when, when uh, the agenda item uh, comes up. Um, but at this time, the, the, the protocol that um, the, the clerk the executive officer and, and county council uh, have worked out um, and with my condonement is we will we will uh, list out what uh, the general consensus of what those public comments are we will not read each and every uh, one I mean there are several hundred so we will not read each and every one but we will we will uh, express a, a tally and a sentiment and uh, for for the board members to uh, to inform uh, any any decision as we you know, as we take action uh, on the agenda item um, with that so I, would, I, I so I just I, I just have a question is there a pro I, I wonder if that's um, something we can actually do I mean to, I don't really no. know if I understand what you're saying, I guess. Well, uh, well so, someone is going to tell us what the public, public comment was yeah, rather yes, than we, allowing us to hear it? Well, I, I believe I understand the agenda item you're referring to. And when we get there, uh, yes, the, the Madam Clerk will, will be able to provide uh, a summary uh, of those comments. So um, we're gonna, we'll get there in, in due time. Uh, at this point, okay, uh, moving on. Okay, thank you. At this point, I'd like to uh, move on to uh, item number two, the executive director's report. Uh, Mr. Kempton. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members, and thank you for uh, putting up with the inconvenience in, the, in this difficult time. Uh, I, I think it is important that we move forward with uh, some of these uh, issues, and um, everyone has been very collaborative. Um, first of all, uh, the uh, California Transportation Community, uh, Commission was scheduled to meet uh, in Santa Barbara on March 25th and 26th. The meeting in Santa Barbara has been canceled and they will be going to a webinar format for the meeting. Uh, and this is an important meeting as it includes the adoption of the state uh, the transportation improvement program, guidelines for the local partnership program, the active transportation program, and a number, uh, number of other items. So if uh, anybody uh, is interested in uh, accessing uh, uh, information, they can either go to this uh, CTC's website at www.cactc.ca.gov. Uh, 
gov uh, or they can uh, actually uh, call at 916-654-4245 um, i wanted to give you an update on the schedule for council and board of supervisor presentations the dates are included in your uh, agenda packet uh, we have all of the uh, dates set recognizing uh, the times that we're uh, facing uh, those dates may be changed and moved around but uh, uh, we will move uh, quickly uh, and uh, work with the uh, local jurisdictions to uh, try to get those meetings scheduled as quickly as possible. And then finally, uh, uh, the Supervisor Natoli asked at our February 26th meeting for a, a sort of a summary of the uh, activity that went on with the ad hoc committee, and I did provide a, a, a summary of that by meeting, and it's included in your agenda packet. That completes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kempton. Um, any questions for the executive director? Okay, hearing none, seeing none. I'm going to move on to uh, item three, consent items, uh, approve action summary for February 26, 2020, STA Governing Board, a special meeting. Um, do I have any comments on that, first of all? Any public comments? I'll move. I totally. Okay, uh, hold on. I've got, I've got the clerk. I see no public comments, and I see no no public comments at the door. So I have a motion from Director Natoli and a second. This is from Director, from Peter. Director Steinberg. I'm told I have to abstain on this item because I was not a member of the board at the last meeting. Okay, welcome, Director Steinberg. Second from Peter. Okay, so I have a motion from Director Natoli. I have a second oh from Director Cerna, and call it for a vote. Um, Madam Clerk, do we need you to roll call vote on all of this as well? Okay. Yes. So we'll do that so we can okay. we can get everybody. Okay. So Steinberg? Is it abstain? Abstain. Mm -hmm. Frost? Here, yes. Gatewood? Yes. Gitta? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Harris? Aye. Howe? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Peters? Aye. Sandhu? Aye. Shanir? Serna? Aye. Suen? Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Um, next item, uh, item four, is the uh, status of development of the proposed Measure A 2020 Ordinance and Transportation Expenditure Plan, and tentative adoption of the uh, Measure A 2020 Expenditure Plan. Um, before I turn it over to uh, Executive Director uh, Kempton, I just want to again emphasize uh, our need to continue um, business in, in recognizing we will uh, be facing these issues again when things get back to normal. Today, we are talking about voting on the adoption of a tentative adoption multiple transportation expenditure plan. Uh, if affirmed, this would merely maintain a long schedule with many steps uh, and preserves our options into the future. So I just want to clarify that uh, for folks. We're, we're merely trying to preserve our options that we take in the future. Things changed very drastically for everyone just a few weeks ago. Could happen again a few months from now. So for the better, with hope. Um, in any case, uh, there's, there's many steps along the way, uh, and we're merely talking about the expenditure plan today. Uh, Director Kempton. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, um, this is a continuation of the public hearing on the draft ordinance and uh, TEP, but the major feature of the action today is to consider and tentatively adopt the Measure A 2020 expenditure plan and approve circulation of the plan to the cities and the county for consideration pursuant to Section 180206B of the Public Utilities Code. The Transportation Expenditure Plan is included as Exhibit A of the proposed ordinance number STA 20-01 and for this action the authority is being asked to approve only the Transportation Expenditure Plan which is attached to the staff report 
and an updated version of the proposed ordinance number STA 20-01 is included on the STA website for reference. Uh, the website posting includes uh, Exhibit A, the Transportation Expenditure Plan, and Exhibit B, uh, Measure A ta Taxpayer uh, Safeguards. Uh, at the last uh, authority meeting on uh, February uh, 20th, uh, staff presented an update on the proposed Measure A ordinance and uh, Transportation Expenditure Plan for discussion purposes only. Um, this was the, uh, the uh, plan uh, at the time, uh, which, uh, as you can see, had a total of uh, $8.2 billion in revenues and with the breakout that uh, is shown on this particular slide. Um, there were changes made to that document. Uh, since, uh, but based on comments from the board and other discussions, we added language defining off-the-top expenditures, including uh, items such as the uh, American River Parkway dollars, uh, money going to the Regional Mobility Center, and a uh, number of other uh, I items. We made changes to the language uh, related to complete streets and road and health safety. Uh, we worked with stakeholders on that uh, language, uh, and that is included in the uh, revised Transportation Expenditure Plan. We revised the revenue estimate, uh, and uh, that now stands at about $8.378 billion. We added distribution language for local projects of regional significance. That is the projects that, uh, with the money going by formula to the local agencies, uh, and uh, the uh, members of those agencies worked out a distribution uh, process, which is now embodied in the expenditure plan. Uh, we changed dollar amounts for major expenditure, expenditure categories to reflect the latest versions of the transportation expenditure plan. Those are included in the document. We added to the description for senior and disabled transportation services the words and any designated consolidated transportation services agency. We added accountability language to the definition of commuter rail enhancements to ensure that any of the dollars that come from our measure are spent in Sacramento County. We added program descriptions for transportation management agencies and the American River Parkway. And we added language regarding compliance with the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. That is a brief summary of the changes that were uh, made to the plan. Um, let me uh, review for you the uh, proposed application of additional revenue, which we provided previously, but there is an additional item on here at the request of the uh, Supervisor Natoli. We've added an additional $8 million for transportation management agencies. So we have $63 million going for the American River Parkway, $50 million additional for air quality programs, $51 million for local streets and roads, $34 million for transit maintenance and operations. <coughs> And uh, because of the increase in the dollar amount, uh, another $2 million for program administration, which, which is part of the 1% uh, total. <coughs> and then uh, the timeline, just to go over this with you, uh, we are uh, at uh, today, although it says March 12th uh, on the, uh, on the uh, ch uh, chart that's contained in your packet, that is now March 18th, uh, the meeting we're holding today. Uh, we will uh, presumably uh, ask for your consideration and tentative adoption of the Measure A Transportation Expenditure Plan. Um, then we will make the rounds, uh, as I discussed earlier, to the cities and the county uh, for approvals. Um, on April 9th, it's our intention to introduce the final Measure A ordinance, uh, which would include the Transportation Expenditure Plan. Uh, and then on May 14th, ask the Governing Board to formally adopt the Measure A ordinance, which will include the Transportation Expenditure Plan. And uh, that will be uh, necessary to have a two-thirds vote. Uh, and then we would forward it to the County Board of Supervisors for certification and approval to place on the ballot. We're currently working with the county on a July 14th date to accomplish that, recognizing that the circumstances we're experiencing right now may result in some adjustments in these dates. This is the current schedule and, of course, November uh, 3rd of 2020 as Election Day. So the uh, actual expenditure plan in summary looks like this. Uh, it's a total of $8.378.3 billion. Uh, we've got uh, $3.876 billion going to local streets and roads, $1.7 billion going to uh, RT maintenance operations and transformative system improvements, 
$2 billion, $10 million that will be going for congestion relief improvements, including transit and rail congestion improvements, as well as highway congestion improvements. It's $250 million for senior and disabled transportation. Uh, okay, is now exiting. Uh, air quality off the top will be 177.5 million. American River Parkway also off the top at 63 million. Rail operations off the top at 120 million. The Regional Mobility Center off the top at 20 million. Transportation agencies, management agencies off the top at 8, uh, 8 million. And then, of course, the 83.8 million dollars for administration. So that's a total of $4,826,000,000 billion that will be going for streets, roads, and highways, and $3,200,000,000 billion that will go for transit and rail. And uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, concludes my report. Um, happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to go to the folks on the phone first if there's any questions. And please, uh, just for now, if you have questions, just say your name so I can get a list going if there, if there are. Are there any questions from the directors on the phone? Okay, no questions. And any questions from my colleagues here? I see no no questions. Okay, I'm going to um, uh, go to. Uh, now joining. I'm going to go to a public comment. But as I do, I want to um, uh, get back to um, Director Frost's question. I'm going to defer to uh, County Council, Mr. Burke, if you could explain uh, our process here. Sure. Thank you. Uh, this is Bill Burke. So the first thing I'll say is that the process that the director and the board clerk and I have worked out, it is consistent with the governor's most recent executive order, which he issued, I believe, yesterday afternoon. And that does allow for uh, receipt of electronic or telephonic comments. And that's what we've done here. Um, I believe these comments have been collected over Maybe the past couple of days or more. I don't know how much time the members ha have had so far to go through them, uh, but there are a lot. It's a big stack of comments. I believe right now we're looking at 540 separate comments. So I will say this. It is legal under the executive order from yesterday to receive these comments electronically. Um, now, the next step is going to be really up to the authority as to how you want to, um, I guess, receive those. You have options, and I'll kind of I'll talk through just a couple of options that you have. You don't have to take any one of these. The first the first option is probably not feasible, but that is to literally read each and every comment into the record. Um, again, we've got a huge stack here, and that's probably not realistic. Um, Another option is to basically take time to, uh, to allow for a half hour or something like that for each member to go through. I believe you've been emailed all these comments by the board clerk to go through and take time to um, skim through them or go through them as, as you can in a half hour or some period of time. The other option is to have the clerk summarize for you the comments that we've received, the clerk has gone through and they've made their best effort to basically assign whether or not each comment is thumbs up or thumbs down or neutral. And she can do that for you. So that'll be for your, uh, for the members to consider how you want to handle that. But in terms of receiving public comment, receiving them electronically is legal. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Burke and uh, Director Cerner. You have a question. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the explanation. Is there another? I'm not sure if you included in any of your alternatives the fact that um, we have received them as you mentioned as they've come in, which has actually given directors the opportunity to read them as they come in. So just by way of actually having them in our possession now with the summary sheet, I assume. Um, not doing anything other than acknowledging that we do have them, that satisfies the spirit and intent of the law as well? Yes, at a minimum, I recommend that the clerk read their summary into the record. Great. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, this is uh, Don Natoli. Yes, Dr. Natoli, go ahead. Yeah, just um, again, I, I think it's important because for those of us got a hard copy uh, that were in the building, we just received them. Some of them came in 
yesterday, so people had a chance maybe to see those, but there's some that came in as recently as late this morning. Um, and I do think you allowing time uh, for us to at least digest that there may be summaries and we may get the gist of what either opposition or support is saying, but you know, certainly in fairness to those that have commented, um, and we'll comment both, you know, on the record here today, uh, verbally, uh, before the end of the, you know, meeting, whatever that is. But I do, I just wanted to say too that, yeah, some of these been coming in over time. We've received any number of comments over the last number of weeks, but there's been a flurry uh, over the last, uh, you know, 24 to 36 hours. Uh, and as Mr. Burke said, uh, you know, several hundred that, uh, at least a few hundred has been received here in the last uh, 24 hours or so. So um, it's a little difficult to digest all that all at once. But again, maybe we, I, I think for each of us can determine whether we get the gist of what's being said, as I said, either in opposition or in support of what's uh, before the board today. So thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, Director Natoli. Um, and, and I would concur. I mean, I think each each director needs to uh, make a choice whether they're able to digest these comments in, in enough fashion as to inform uh, their decision and uh, take action accordingly. Uh, I want to um, also defer now to uh, Madam Clerk, if, if you could please provide a summary of, of the comments. Total number in opposition was 448. Total number in support was 66. Total in neutral or comments only was 26. And so far, as of 11.30 today, that was 540 comments received. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. And uh, again, I, I, I want to uh, uh, commend uh, Supervisor Frost. I, I know you had sent out an, an email, and I know there were a lot of folks, several hundred, that submitted their comments um, directly from uh, from your uh, area. So appreciate uh, you reaching out to folks and getting them involved and engaged in this process. Um, oh, um, so, Director Soon? Yeah. Uh, the Supervisor Frost? Yes, I, yeah. I did. Um, I did reach out um, online and to my distribution list, which um, many are in my district, not all in my district. And um, while I um, understand and respect um, that it's difficult uh, given the uh, the phone uh, situation to read every one of those comments. We won't really know where they're from. We don't really know where they're from. Um, we don't know that they're from all over the county. And so we, we don't know what where they're from and we don't really have a, a good feel for what was stated unless we review all of them or listen to all of them. Um, but uh, so I just wanted to clarify uh, because I don't know that they were all from my district. In fact, if we're receiving them up until the end of this meeting, we won't have all the comments until the end of the meeting. And I think it's important. Uh, that's an important part of the process. It's an important part of informing us, um, especially during this time with coronavirus and, you know, all that's going on around um, the coronavirus uh, situation people have a lot on their minds and a lot on their plates right now and so their thoughts and their feelings and their opinions are really important i just wanted to go on record as i don't know that they're all from my district yeah th thank Mr. you director Chair, this is steve hansen hold on hold on um I appreciate that, Director Frost. We, yeah, we don't know, and and, and I heard uh, I heard Sh Mr. Sh Doctor Director Shanier and Director Hansen. And before I I uh, I uh, um, give you the floor, I just want to say I, I I got some notice from the clerk that we've uh, had just recently 33 more comments have come in, and so we're getting those distributed, uploaded to, uploaded to the website and distributed to folks. And folks, could you please uh, mute uh, your phones if you're not speaking? Thank you. Or turn it down uh, as well. And then uh, also a point of clarification, as of uh, yesterday morning, we received one, I mean, one public comment. Mm -hmm. uh, once the revised agenda was published at, after 2 p.m. yesterday, there was 200 uh, public comments, over 200 public comments that came in. So that's just as of yesterday afternoon after 2 p.m. when the revised agenda was was published. So there was, uh, you know, a short period of time uh, in between. Okay, with that uh, that additional information, Director Chenier, you you wanted to uh, have a had a question or a comment?
Perhaps I heard wrong. Maybe it wasn't Director Shamir. I did hear Director Hansen. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. I, I think just on the matter of public comment, um, because this was sent out via email list by some but not all, I just suggest that we as a board take the comments under submission. Uh, the plan is going to come before each council as well and the Board of Supervisors. And so I, I think that this is only one piece of the overall puzzle. But we've been receiving public comment now as a board uh, on this very item, which has been continued for um, two months now. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know how we stop the process, which we delayed last week because of the um, changing uh, public health situation again, um, given the timeline that we have to, to make a decision. And I, I just would urge the board not to, uh, to read the comments, and I've read them. Many of them are um, just no, and um, very straightforward two, three, four word statements. And um, we, we, need, we have a broader base of the public who will have a chance to weigh in at each of the next steps of which there are many. And so I, I don't really wanna get hung up on this um, at this particular juncture, but I would like to have Will's presentation. Thank you, Director Hansen. I, I, I would concur, and just to you know reiterate, yeah, we we've had several public meetings on this topic. This is not new. Um, all of us combined individually have heard from our stakeholders and constituents uh, on this matter, uh, and there will be ample opportunity for uh, each of our respective constituents to speak to us directly at our respective. Uh, um, jurisdictions uh, if this goes forward uh, and then uh, there, there's a several you know with each juncture there's several steps in the process uh, to either continue or abandon this effort but again as I stated at the opening this is an opportunity for us to keep our options open uh, having said that and hearing no other comments or questions uh, I would ask seek my colleagues direction to, to uh, entertain a motion at this time I'll move adoption okay I have a motion from director Cerna second. and a second, second from director director Hansen, Hansen. Uh, all those in favor I oh we need to do a roll call Aye. sorry <laughs> sorry roll call vote thank you <laughs> yes Mr. Chair, what are we voting on to accept the comments no, no it was a motion to uh, it was a motion to uh, adopt the uh, expenditure plan Tentative. Tentatively, Tentative, adopt. tentatively adopt, excuse me, tentatively adopt the expenditure plan. And no intent to have any further discussion? There, there was no fur further discussion at this time. We're receiving comments that are available to the public, uh, and folks will have an opportunity to chime in at their respective jurisdictions on this matter when this matter comes before them if this, if this uh, motion carries. Okay, just for clarification, I understand there's a motion on the floor, but before we vote, so that includes not just the uh, fiscal allocations, but all the language that's attached here too, is that correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, everything is in there, embedded, everything is embodied yeah. in there, rarely the description. That's, we're adopting or is it just purely? Tentatively adopting. Tentatively adopting to, to carry forward to the re respective jurisdictions for their consideration. And if, am I no, saying that I correctly? I just want to okay. Sure. I'm sorry, Jerry. I just so we're adopting the expenditure plan, which has all the verbiage describing the intended uses, any prescriptive um, uh, uh, items that would address certain projects or certain uh, funding for fix it first, for transit. All that's embedded in the expenditure plan. That's what we're being asked to vote on this moment. Is that correct? That yes. is correct. Okay. I just want I wanted to understand because it was. Pretty quick. Yeah. So I know there's been quite a bit of discussion. So okay. I, yeah, and, and I understand, Director Tolley. And just just so you have comfort, I'm gonna I'm gonna look to the executive officer if if you wouldn't mind just repeating um, that what what you had said earlier about basically framing up your presentation, summary of your presentation. Um. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair and members, uh, first of all, you are being asked to tentatively adopt the Transportation Expenditure Plan, which is an exhibit of the uh, ordinance 
uh, STA 20-01. That ordinance will not be taken up until later, currently scheduled for consideration on May 14th. Um, so uh, the uh, contents of the expenditure plan are the discussion. There are uh, some policy issues that are included in there. There are some, uh, for the most part, uh, a breakdown of the expenditures that uh, uh, that will be uh, made uh, should uh, the ordinance uh, be uh, uh, approved, placed on the ballot, and approved by the voters. Um, there are dollar amounts by major category of activities, uh, and there are descriptions of the programs that uh, will be funded. So it is a fairly complete document related to proposed expenditures of a 40-year uh, sales tax program in Sacramento County, which would, be, which would begin on uh, April 21st, 2021, and go through March 31st of 2061. Thank Mr. you. Chair. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Uh, Director Antoli, before I answer, I, I have a, I, I see a county council wanting to chime in. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to make one p quick point about voting. For the purposes of this vote today, the tentative adoption of the expenditure plan, you're only going to need your majority, your simple majority of nine votes. But when you ultimately have to vote, if it gets that far, if you get to adoption of the ordinance, which includes the expenditure plan, that's gonna require a supermajority, that's 11 of you. So today it can be nine, but it's gotta be 11 when it comes back in a couple of months. And, and yeah. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry to come Director back. There's uh, uh, hold on, hold on. One, one further point, yeah. uh, on tentative adoption, the expenditure plan cannot be changed or modified until we're through the process that's required by the Public Utilities Code. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to make that statement. Okay, thank you. Director Natoli? Yes, so if I just follow on, thank you, and I know it's a director process. So as relates, and I just want to be clear, because there's been a lot of uh, work by the ad hoc committee and others on um, language in certain segments of this, and I'm very appreciative of that. I want to be clear on just one piece of this, though. So uh, as relates to all the conversation on the uh, MTP and any connectivity to the connector road and so forth. Um, again, and there have been others that have been closer to the conversations. Could somebody just give me the brief as to how that works as it relates to the ordinance uh, now and going forward, uh, assuming I mean, say the ordinance or expenditure plan, excuse me, the expenditure plan. Could I just have a, a quick overview as to you know, what was settled on? I can read it here in front of me, but I want to be clear uh, as you call for the vote. Please. Absolutely. No. To, uh, yeah. And I, I, I apologize. I, I, I perhaps didn't know and hear me. I, I asked for questions earlier, but I heard none. That's the only reason why I called for the vote. So forgive me, Director Natoli. Um, it, it, uh, um, Mr. Kempton, could you go ahead and, and uh, provide an explanation to Mr. Natoli's comment? And I, be I, I believe, Ms., uh, Matt, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, the uh, that uh, Mayor Steinberg also wanted to make a comment, but. Uh, in, in short, uh, there is language relative to compliance with the Metropolitan Transportation uh, Plan uh, Sustainable Community Strategies uh, document uh, that was uh, approved uh, in November of this past year by SACOG. Uh, that language uh, requires compliance with uh, um, the MTP uh, prior to uh, the allocation of funds for uh, projects, uh, projects uh, that are in the programmed or planned section of the MTP, which is a number of our projects included in our plan, uh, are, uh, are allowed to proceed. Projects that don't have that planned or programmed status uh, will have to uh, uh, be found in compliance with the MTP. There is an amendment, I mean, I'm sorry, a process built in for, uh, uh, for mitigation. If a project does not meet those requirements, uh, parties can work with SACOG to uh, develop a mitigation plan that uh, uh, would permit the project to be uh, funded. Uh, if that uh, cannot be achieved, uh, then uh, the dollars that are uh, uh, set aside in the plan, because they won't be in the hands yet of the, of the recipient agency, uh, those projects would go to uh, the uh, local, uh, the appropriate local jurisdiction to be spent on projects that are in compliance with the MTP. 
Yeah, thank you. And I'll just clarify that plan or program for construction, a vast majority of the of the expenditure plan is already slated uh, for that. And by parties, uh, the intent of that language was uh, for STA, um, SACOG, uh, and uh, um, the, um, the, the local jurisdiction. Yeah, thank you. Which could include a transit agency is, is the intent. Um, and Mr. Kempton, thank you, f um, you know, for your comment about uh, Director Steinberg. Uh, if y did you want to uh, clarify that for Director uh, Matoli? I think that uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think Mr. Kempton and you, Mr. Chairman, uh, explain the, the the provision uh, thoroughly. It's a, it, it is a mitigation uh, allowance, um, and it would allow any highway or transit project not currently in the Metropolitan Transportation Plan uh, that is in the uh, STA expenditure plan to go forward uh, if it does not impact uh, the 19 percent target set by the region and if it would it allows for uh, a mitigation uh, pathway uh, to allow the highway or transit plan to be part of of the metropolitan transportation plan, if if the GHG impacts can be mitigated, um, and so I, I I appreciate all the hard work that uh, has gone into uh, this overall plan, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, engage around this provision. Thank you. Thank you, Director Steinberg. Uh, yeah, Director Frost, sorry, just one more. I, I got, hold on, Director Frost. I, I had to sign up also for um, Director Cerna. Go ahead, Director Cerna, and then you, Director okay, Frost. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to dovetail off of uh, what Mayor Steinberg just said and uh, thank him for his, um, his thoughtful <laughs> approach to this as well. I just want to, uh, for the record, also acknowledge the fact that I believe uh, the resolution to this issue, which has been um, kind of at the forefront of everyone's minds lately um, to get us to this point today, uh, I believe also addresses the concerns that were expressed by uh, the California Air Resources Board uh, in their letter. So I just want to make sure that um, everyone understands that and that um, it's been acknowledged on the record. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Director Frost. Oh, okay. I, I just wanted to make a couple of comments prior to the vote um, so that I could make sure that I go on record um, and people understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I think early on in this process, I, um, I really was excited about the polling that we did. I really felt that there was a path to uh, really, um, I'm not really a person who promotes tax increases. I'm generally, um, my district is, is um, not, um, uh, I guess in favor of a lot of tax increases and I represent them um, but um, the polling showed that uh, throughout the county that there were there was a path to uh, a tax major that could possibly have given us you know some local discretion on funds and, and the ability to catch up on some deferred maintenance that has occurred over the past I'm going to say five or ten years um, as the federal and then the state uh, government have withdrawn um, and or redirected <coughs> us away from just the simple main maintenance of our roads. And um, what they said was they wanted the roads fixed. Um, so, you know, early on my, my thought uh, was all around, I, you know, the 60-40 split and I had, and I know I had some issues with the ordinance. Um, and the Public Utilities Code uh, 180-207 that, you know, basically allows the STA board to change the, um, the um, expenditure plan on an annual basis uh, with a simple majority vote. And I know we're not talking about that here, but we will ultimately have to have that conversation before we approve the ordinance. Um, today, what I want to talk about is um, the, uh, the global pandemic that is before us called coronavirus, the fact that the Bay Area Transportation Commission shut their tax measure down because it just is completely, uh, you know, tone deaf 
to think that um, people are going to be uh, able to even think about a tax increase under under the um, extreme circumstance that we're all under. <coughs> And, um, say not okay, please uh, uh, mute your phones, please, if you're not talking. <clears throat> Sorry, Director Frost, go ahead. Just, uh, thank you. I, I guess uh, what I want to say is uh, all, all the past arguments that I, or comments that I had uh, fade away and become pale in comparison to the situation we have before us right now. Um, and so um, because of all those reasons, and mostly um, the latter, I'm not going to be supporting the expenditure plan. Okay, thank you, Director Frost. Uh, Director Hume. Thank you, Chair. I just want to uh, clarify kind of along the lines of what Director Natoli was asking and what the Executive Director weighed in on. Uh, today's vote, we're simply sending this expenditure plan out to the jurisdictions to get their, uh, take their temperature uh, putting a pin in all of the language and all of the proposed projects until such time that it comes back to the body, at which point it will have a higher threshold for passage, and that will be the moment uh, whether or not we choose to move forward, and, and, and that will be happen in May. Is that correct? That is correct, and, and the May time frame could be later. We, we just don't know. But to, so to, to clarify then, today's vote is keeping the process moving, and then we can come back and potentially uh, the, the restrictions and things that are causing such extraordinary circumstances due to the COVID-19 uh, change between now and then, and we can have an in-person discussion on the actual merits, et cetera. That, that is correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Who, who is speaking? Hansen. Oh, yes. Director Hansen. Yep. Um, I just I just wanted to say, as the board is considering this, um, and I think Supervisor Frost's comments actually are helpful in, in many ways to resolving some of the things we've been working on for a long time. But uh, I, I, the mayor, uh, Director Steinberg now, as we get to call him, is uh, equal among us. Um, it did work very hard to resolve the largest outstanding challenge here, and I think deserves a lot of credit. But as I sit here today, I've been skeptical about this process and this plan. But I think um, one of the things that caused me to add my second was um, when we often enter these uh, periods where the economy is really challenged, it is the very kind of work that we're talking about here today at this board and that we're going to send to the city councils and the board of supervisors to debate that often is considered economic stimulus. And because this measure leverages so much other money, I do think today we're not just taking a vote on congestion relief, transit improvements, road repair. We, we're actually taking a vote to give the jurisdictions um, represented at this board a chance to um, discuss economic stimulus for our county and for our workers and for our communities and they'll have you know ultimately that is a choice <clears throat> if this process puts it on the ballot that the voters will have to make and um, that is that is really probably properly in their hands but I did want to add that that thought to the board that this is potentially a, a very important economic stimulus as well as all the other things we've talked about. Th thank you, Director Thanks Hansen. Chair, yes, Harris? Yep, yeah, yeah, Director Harris, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chairman Stewart. I'd like to just add this thought. Yes, there are many uncertainties around the coronavirus and we're not sure where that path is leading. However, that does not, to me, signal that we should stop the work that we have been pursuing for well over a year. I've participated on the committee on this measure uh, since its inception, and I would have to say that the public outreach on this has been extraordinary. We have listened to so many members of the public and all the advocacy groups. It's my opinion, and a very strong opinion, that we have reached a compromise that is the best that can be reached in our region, and that the benefits of passing this measure will be manifold to every constituent on every level. So uh, I'd like to just thank the committee for the hard work that we've done, 
and say that this is the right time to go ahead and, and further this TEP. I would like to put it to a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. If there are no other uh, comments uh, from the board members, I also want to take the opportunity to announce uh, we've had 21 more public comments come in that you'll, you'll be receiving. Uh, I'm going to uh, also um, close public comment at this time. Uh, I believe uh, you know we, we've got a, a motion and a second on the floor, and I just want to say uh, I think this is a culmination of a lot of hard work and a, a testament to regional collaboration that goes way beyond just this any one measure um, and has the ability, if uh, successful, to set the stage for future collaborative efforts within this county. Uh, and it's it's a uh, it's a very complex. Uh, uh, thing for all these jurisdictions with different needs to work together and, and to come together on something like this is truly uh, will could truly be a, a testament uh, to what we can achieve in the future and I do believe we will get through the, this current crisis and when we do these types of issues these everyday issues will come back right before us uh, where we left off so it, as director Harris stated and others stated it's important for us to carry on our work um, uh, Madam Clerk, would you go ahead and please uh, take the, the roll call vote, please? Uh, Director Steinberg? Aye. Frost? No. Gatewood? No. Gitta? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Harris? Aye. Howe? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? No. Natoli? Aye. Peters? Aye. Sandhu? Aye. Shanir? Aye. Serna? Aye. And Suwin? Aye. Motion carries with Frost, Gatewood, and Miller voting no. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Director Garrett, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just I just want to take this time to thank you, Mr. Chair, for um, the leadership that you've taken on in this and working and pulling everyone, particularly in the middle of this. And this is this has been a, a uh, one difficult one that's for the region. And I appreciate your regional leadership on this. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I also want to return the favor and thank all of the committee members and the, the board and the staff uh, and the PAG who put so many hours in in all these conversations. Um, it's, it's truly a team effort, and I appreciate you all. Please stay safe out there. Um, and without further ado, uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. You missed your, you missed your thank you. Thank you. You missed your comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Multiple people are now exiting. Yeah.